Welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. My name is George, and today I would like to go through my top 10 philosophical novels list. So, by philosophical novels, I'm talking about fiction books that have a lot of deep philosophical themes within them. So, not specific philosophy books, okay? Not academic books that focus on theories or anything like that, but fictional stories that are in themselves really deep, really philosophical, and really get the reader thinking. I believe every philosopher should make time to read these books. Now, a lot of you might get bogged down with all the non-fiction reading material and you might be looking for some entertainment, so use this list for your next reading material. What will determine what books have made this list will be down to both how deep and philosophical the novel is, but also how much of a good read it is. How good is the story, the writing, the development of the characters, etc, etc. And, as a rule, an author can only have one book in this list just to give it a bit more depth and diversity. Now, I'll run through all 10 and give a brief explanation of the books and the philosophical themes, but I won't be giving any spoilers, so you can watch this video and then start working through the reading list. So, let's begin. In at number 10, we have Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This 1953 book is set in a dystopian future where all books are in fact banned and there is a specific government department of firemen whose job is to track down all books and burn them. The story follows Guy Montag, a fireman carrying out his day-to-day -day work, finding these outlaw books and destroying them. However, one day, Guy decides to steal a book instead of destroying it. After reading it, Guy starts becoming disillusioned and frustrated with the world he lives in and his role in it. This is a very interesting cautionary tale we are told. Bradbury really makes us think about our society and culture and the dangerous path we can easily go down. It is superbly written, broken into three distinct parts which really helps move the story along. The philosophical themes that come up in this book include liberty, freedom of expression and censorship, authoritarianism and government control. A great political philosophy novel and one that should be on all your reading lists. In at number 9, we have Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. Published in 1968, this sci-fi book is set in a future where Earth has been severely damaged by nuclear war. Most humans have gone to live on other planets as Earth is slowly becoming uninhabitable. The colony of Mars creates humanoid androids as servants for the humans living there. However, Sometimes, certain androids escape the planet and flee to Earth to try and live freely undetected. When this happens, humans send in special bounty hunters to track and kill the escaped androids. This book follows Rick Deckard, a bounty hunter tasked with capturing six recently escaped androids. This is a really thrilling and exciting book and was in fact the inspiration for the film Blade Runner, a true sci-fi novel with very deep philosophical themes around the philosophy of mind, human thought, philosophy of consciousness, AI and ethics. Thoroughly entertaining book, you will really enjoy it. Philip Dick is one of the greatest sci-fi writers ever, so you are guaranteed a proper page turner. On to number 8, we have Atlas Shrugged, the 1957 novel by Ayn Rand. Set in a dystopian United States of America, we see a country that is really struggling. Private businesses all across the country are suffering due to government regulations and control. As these businesses are crumbling, so too is the country's economy. The story follows the railroad executive Dagny Taggart and a steel executive Hank Reardon and their fight back against the national legislators. However, as well as this fight, there is also a mysterious case of business tycoons completely disappearing without a trace. Now, in the academic philosophy world, Rand gets a very bad rap and there are many people who say she is not a philosopher or despise her actual theories. I'm not here to discuss or debate that right now, maybe a video for the future. However, Atlas Shrugged as a book is a really good read. There is a great story, there are great characters, and of course, whether you agree with Rand's stance or not, there are philosophical themes throughout the whole novel. The themes include objectivism, individualism, libertarianism, and capitalism versus socialism. A true political philosophy novel, Rand as a fictional writer is superb, she really knows how to tell a story. I would definitely recommend reading this book wherever you sit on the political spectrum, this book will fuel your desire for a political philosophy debate. 
Moving on to number seven, and we have 1984 by George Orwell. This book, written in 1949, is a cult classic and one of the most famous books ever written. The novel is again set in a dystopian future. The year is 1984, but of course in 1949 this would have been the future. But anyway, Great Britain is now part of a super state called Oceania. This is ruled by a totalitarian government. The head of this government is known as Big Brother. This government has complete control over everyone's lives and complete knowledge on what everyone is doing. The eye of Big Brother is everywhere, with telescreens everywhere, mass surveillance demanding complete obedience across every part of your existence with endless rules and regulations and so many forbidden practices. No one has freedom under Big Brother. The story follows Winston Smith, a government worker who despises living under Big Brother and longs for freedom and liberty. This book is a true masterpiece. It will bring up so many emotions in you when you're reading it. George Orwell is one of the best authors of all time and this really shows in 1984. It is so well written, the characters are fascinating, but Orwell paints such a chilling yet accurate picture of what a ruthless totalitarian government would look like. The philosophical themes in this book include authoritarianism, totalitarianism and government control, government oppression, individualism, liberty, thought control, political dogmatism and ideology. This is one all philosophers have to read. You have to glimpse at how bad things can get and why we need to stay involved in politics. In at number six we have The Island by Aldous Huxley. This 1963 novel is in fact Huxley's final novel. It shows us the utopian society of Pala. The story follows Will Farnaby, an English journalist who arrives at Pala for research and discovers that the people of Pala have created their own utopia. By blending the best parts of Western culture with the best parts of Eastern culture, they have created a paradise on Earth. Farnaby falls in love with Pala, the people and their way of life. However, the island is in fact in jeopardy. The island will assume a new leader, a child who has been largely raised and educated outside of Pala. This soon-to-be child leader hates the Pala culture and is looking at radical changes on the island and to perhaps sell oil rights to large companies. I would say this was Huxley's best novel. He paints the picture of a utopian island so well. You are reading this book and you actually feel like you're there. You develop an emotional attachment to the people of Pala and the culture that you're learning about. It's just so great. The philosophical themes in this book include mysticism, utopianism, democracy and corruption, capitalism, consumerism and religious experience. A great read for all philosophers, especially those on the side of mystical beliefs and experiences. Right, so now we are in the top half of the list. Okay, so number five of the top 10 philosophical fiction list is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This 1866 novel is another of the all-time greats. Dostoevsky is one of the masters of philosophical novels and in fact deserves his own top 10 list. I found it hard to choose just one. I was going to go with Brothers Karamazov but changed it last minute to Crime and Punishment. I chose Crime and Punishment because the story is marvellous and it's so well written but unlike most of Dostoevsky's works I thought Crime and Punishment was an easier read. The story flowed better and it's easier to understand and get your head around. Um, so we follow the character Rodion Roskolnikov, a student in St. Petersburg who is really struggling financially and living in real poverty. Raskolnikov reasons and rationalizes and then plans to kill a horrible old lady and take her money and belongings. This book walks us through the moral rationalizing of committing this action as well as what could happen mentally, physically and spiritually when one engages in such dark activity. This book raises the philosophical themes around nihilism, the Nietzschean Ubermensch, as well as moral philosophy on utilitarianism, deontological ethics, religious ethics and natural law. Such a powerful book. There is a reason why it's one of the all-time greats. It gives a great look into 19th century St. Petersburg and the struggles that go on and definitely this must be on all philosophers reading list I highly highly recommend this book in at number four we have the metamorphosis by Franz Kafka 
One of the darkest, most surreal authors to read is Franz Kafka. An absolute genius and way ahead of his time. Everything you read from him is marvellous. Even his unfinished books are just so much more mesmerising and intriguing because he didn't finish them. Again, I struggled to just pick one of Kafka's books for this list. I narrowed it down to The Trial and The Metamorphosis, but decided to go with the latter. Anyway, The Metamorphosis is more of a novella, but even in the shortness of this story, we are met with such a heavy, dark and scary narrative. The story follows Gregor Samsa, who wakes up one morning to find that he has completely transformed into a massive insect. The story then looks at what this metamorphosis means for Samsa and how he can fit into the life he once had and the challenges that arise. This is such a profound piece of work. I can't even stress this enough. You will read this novella and you'll be thinking about it for weeks to come. It is powerful and it's such an ugly story and one I think so many people can actually relate to. Now, the book itself is not obvious and explicit in the message it's trying to give, and I think that's why it's so amazing. But because of this, there are so many interpretations and opinions as to what this book is about. So definitely read this and come up with your own. But for me, I found the philosophical themes in The Metamorphosis included existentialism, personal identity, individualism, dualism, and the mind-body distinction. So, one of the greatest works from one of the greatest writers. If you do get the metamorphosis, try to get the compilation with other short stories from Kafka, then as a book, it's just superb. Right, so now we're in the top three. Here we go, who gets the bronze? In at number three, we have The Stranger by Albert Camus. Published in 1946, this is such an extraordinary novel because the story itself, the narrative, is specifically written to display Camus' branch of existential philosophy. So, given that it is its own philosophy, the book also tells a magnificent story. So, The Stranger, also published as The Outsider, is a novella and follows the character Merceau, a regular man, a French person, living in Algeria, who one day gets roped into an unnecessary murder. The novella is split into two parts. Part 1 is leading up to the murder, and part 2 is the aftermath. As far as story goes, this is as much as I can say, but the beauty of this is the first-person narrative, and reading Merceau's thoughts and narration, we get a profound look into Camus' philosophy. So, the major philosophical theme is absurdism as well as existentialism, but it's more than a theme, it is the book. Merceau's thoughts takes us on this absurdism journey, and it shines a light on this philosophy and worldview in a remarkable way. A true philosophical novel, really outstanding from start to finish, one that every philosopher has to read. Okay, now we are in second place. So, who takes the silver medal? In at number two, we have... Steppenwolf by Hermann Hesse. Okay, firstly, let me just say, if you are a philosophy enthusiast with a love for literature, you have to read everything by Hermann Hesse immediately. Personally, he is my favourite author of all time. His catalogue of work is pure magic. This top 10 list could have arguably been all Hermann Hesse. However, it was easy for me to choose just one. For this, it's Steppenwolf one of the greatest novels of all time, with a cult following. Steppenwolf is a must-read for all philosophers out there. Published in 1927, the story follows Harry Haller, a middle-aged man full of despair and melancholy. Harry feels alienated from society. Harry is repulsed by the middle-class bourgeoisie society that he is in fact part of, and instead sees himself more as a wolf of the steppes. With this depression, melancholy and loneliness, Harry wishes to commit suicide. However, through a series of fascinating encounters, romantic interests and bewildering experiences, Harry begins to discover a new life worth living. I cannot begin to explain how truly amazing this book is. Hesse writes like a poet. You're reading a novel but it's so poetic, so expressive and this particular book is so dark, so much sorrow, yet it's so beautiful in a really weird way. There are so many themes and motifs in this book, but as far as philosophical themes go, we are met with nihilism, pessimism, existentialism, as well as personal identity, mysticism, and ether reality. This will be one of the best books you will ever read, but especially if you are deep and into philosophical themes, but looking for something dark and dangerous and mysterious, then Steppenwolf is an absolute must-read.
Right, so we've gone from 10 to 2. Almost ready to reveal number one, but before I get there, I do want to quickly mention a new book by Philosophy Vibe we really think this audience would love. Introducing Requisite Release. This is a philosophical novel written for a deep philosophical audience. The story follows Simon, a young man battling severe depression and undergoing a major existential crisis. Simon no longer sees any purpose or meaning to life. His nihilistic worldview has consumed him, and as a result, he has become a social recluse, developed debilitating anxiety, and destroyed all significant relationships. Simon is recommended to undergo cognitive behavioural therapy, and begins seeing the therapist Linda, who is tasked with trying to help put his life back on track. The book is a compilation of Linda's therapy session notes and Simon's journal log. This is the story of a young man's journey of self-creation and the search for meaning in an absurd universe. If you are watching this video, then you are a person interested in philosophy, deep themes and thought-provoking material. This is definitely the book for you. It is available worldwide on Amazon, the links are below, and all purchases really help out this channel and we really do appreciate it. Okay, thanks for sticking with me so far, but we're ready now to reveal number one. So here we go. Philosophy Vibe's number one philosophical novel is Sophie's World by Jostin Garda. Now, when I say a philosophical novel, this literally is a philosophical novel. It is a novel about philosophy. This is the ultimate tribute of fiction to philosophy. And I would say imperative that every philosopher makes time to read this book. I mean, really, you have to read this book. As soon as you are done watching this video, go and order a copy. You will not be disappointed. So to go into a little more detail, The 1991 novel Sophie's World follows the young girl Sophie, a typical teenager going about her life. One day, she starts receiving some very strange letters with some very thought-provoking questions, the first one being, who are you? As the novel progresses, Sophie meets the mysterious Alberto Knox, who has been sending Sophie these letters to introduce her to bigger, more fascinating questions. Alberto then becomes Sophie's philosophy mentor and introduces her to the amazing world of philosophy. This novel takes us on a history of philosophy while still following a wonderful and peculiar story of Sophie and her world. Given that this book takes us on a journey through the history of philosophy, we get to read the deepest, most thought-provoking conversations between Alberto and Sophie. We learn a vast amount about philosophy itself. We are introduced to all the great ideas and to all the great philosophers over the years. But still, true to its literary form, this is not an academic book. The story is so amazing, so perplexing. It keeps to the philosophy theme, but has us engaged in a real page turner. As this is is a novel about the history of philosophy, we are met with philosophical themes around the philosophy of religion, metaphysics, philosophy of perception, philosophy of mind, existentialism, dualism, and so much more. This is the book every philosopher needs to read. You will love it. You will probably read it more than once. This is definitely Philosophy Vibe's number one philosophical fiction book to read. So there you go. Philosophy Vibes Top 10 Philosophical Novels. Make sure you go and read all 10 of these books if you haven't already done so. And if anyone has any suggestions of other philosophical novels that you think should have been on this list, then please let me know in the comments below. Likewise, if you disagree with any of my choices or disagree with any of the rankings, do let me know. And finally, don't forget to grab your copy of Requisite Release. The book is available on Amazon and the links are below. You will not be disappointed. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like and share and subscribe to the channel for more philosophical content. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.